Hello and welcome to the studio where we paint away the stress of everyday life here with me in Wales. And you've just caught me, Jess Owen, my canvas panel. It's a 10 by 8 canvas. I'm just applying the second coat of gesso. And while I do that, please pop along and have a look at the palette and see what colours we're going to be using today. Okay, so I've got a one inch short flat and um, the gesso is now dry. Um, so I'm just picking up a little bit of moisture on my brush, putting it on the palette and picking up some Ceylon Blue. I'm going to mix a very thin paint and I can do this with my medium mix because that's available in the website. And if you want to pop along, you can pick up some of that or just plain water, but try not to use it more than 35-40% because your paint may flake in time. Okay, without further ado, I'm just mixing a bit of white to that. I want a nice light, light blue. I'm So I'm lightening it down with some white. And this is just called a ground. And I'm just going to put that on. It's a little bit lighter than that I want. Just add a little bit more white onto that. There you go. Add in a little bit more white. I just want to get that nice and light. I'm going to paint this ground on. You can see the paint is quite thin. There you go. And the reason we say paint underbinds is because the, the, the structure of the paint can actually break down. The more water you add to it, the less it actually binds together with the, the molecules. So beware of that. Um, you can do some research on the internet. Um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about it. And also, if you want to pop along to the website, which is www www.clay5art.co.uk where you can actually purchase a media mix which prevents that from happening I'm picking up some more white there we go I want a nice white bright spot in the center of this painting so I'm gonna bring that in now I'm just putting this ground on for now because I want a nice light blue I want it bright I want it bright so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some extra white onto my palette. There we go. And I use a Winsor & Newton gallery range of, of paint. That's that particular one there. Um, this happens to be a 500ml uh, uh, bottle, but you can get them in the 60ml tubes. So, you know, it's a good range of paint. That's what I use um, for these lessons and for a majority of my paintings because um, I find the flow of paint is really nice and it suits my needs as an artist and a teacher but um, there are other ones out there on the marketplace but I would say um, a medium range student paint is what you're actually looking for so I'm brightening up a spot just in there now with a little bit more white and they also do um, a professional range of paints as well and when I do commission works like portraits or pet portraits and things I use I tend to use the, the more expensive paints because there's more pigment in those paints um, that's that's uh, the only expense really is more pigment in there um, the paints a little bit thicker for that reason um, and it lasts a little bit longer as well but it is expensive um, and if you're just starting out when well, you don't need to buy all these expensive paints I'm gonna dry that off with a hairdryer And what I'm going to incorporate today is maybe, maybe just a little bit of drawing. Um, now, I'm going to be using a, a brush for this, a paintbrush. Um, but if you can use it, you can use a pencil if you want to. A uh, very light pencil. Um, and then you can just erase that or paint over the lines. It's entirely up to you. Um, it should be okay. But I'm going to try to uh, outline this by hand. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Prussian blue. There we go. I'm going to thin that right down. Because I want, I want a bridge or something to come in here, and you've got to think. You need to, if you want to practice, I practice on a bit of paper first, so you can, you can get this um, right. So I, I want, I want, a, I want a bridge to come in, maybe round that type of mark there. That's going to come sweeping down around, and there's going to be some steps there like that I think <laughs> so we we'll just just put a few just put a few lines in as guides these are just guidelines you don't need to draw in order to paint I've said this before but I have got lessons at the moment um, for 
kids to learn to draw um, and, I'm, and I'm really enjoying that process because I'm spending some time with my, my granddaughter and um, it's a bit of fun as well I think and it's nice to encourage the youngsters into painting I've got a couple of painting videos planned as well for that so I want to bring that up there like that you can see the shape of the bridge now there you go and maybe we can put some rails or something there um, we need to put a keystone in there we go um, the bridge can come along there we'll put some put some stones in like that oh that's okay there we go we could bring that down then like that that's the underneath of the bridge there you go So, um, let's have a look at this now. There we go. We'll get that down like that. And that's basically all we need to do. That's all we need to do as far as that is concerned. So, let's put in some trees in the distance now. So, again, get some sail on blue and some white. There you go. I think I'm going to change my brush. I think I'm going to get a... Um, so I've got a script lining brush, I'm sorry about that, I keep getting phone calls today and uh, it interrupts the whole filming process and interrupts the old brain sometimes. So I'm just thinning down that sail on blue with some medium mix or water, it's entirely up to you, and that's a, a nice light, light colour blue. And what I want to do is just put some maybe distant tree shapes or something like that, just put a, a few little scribbly marks like this and just put branches and twigs and make them fade away into the background like that branches and twigs that's all we want to do um, maybe bring a couple of trunks down there like that branches and twigs branches and twigs that's all you want increase that color a touch a little bit of Prussian blue into that blue so we'll just darken that blue up and again bring some branches and twigs in front of those ones you need to get the paint reasonably thin for, for this process to work so just put some lines like this there you go I'm gonna mist all that off in a second now I'm gonna mist that off all in a second there we go put some twigs lines twigs branches it's all in the middle there's no there's no definite tree or anything there at the moment and uh, oops, I just washed my brush in my medium mix. You don't want to do that. <laughs> um, you, you don't want to do that. <laughs> no, but I did. It doesn't matter. I've, I've got a few lighter ones now. Just a touch of blue. Just a touch of blue. Just to put some maybe indications of that there's something going on there in the background. Um, I want to bring this in a little bit um, stronger now. So I'm going to get a detailing brush this is a number um, number four number one number one detail brush there we are number one detail brush bring in some sail on blue this is a darker color and I want to bring in a, a nice bring in a nice dark trunk branch in front of them like that spend a little bit of time on that no point rushing these things because that's not the that's not what we're in the studio for we're here to learn and we're here just to relax and chill out that's what we're here for that's certainly true bit of Prussian blue I'm gonna bring a touch of white to that just to lighten it a little bit and I'm gonna put another big trunk just there like that behind that bridge and we'll bring out another limb like that and as I do that I'm, I'm twisting the brush and I'm pulling the pressure off the tip just to give me that effect that there's branches on there we can put a few 
darker lines in with the script liner brush in a minute but for now we're just making effects of trees like that so I'm just going to wash that brush quickly picking up a bit of this Prussian blue again and then darker twiglets in there like that it's a mass of twigs and branches make it look as if it's way way there in the background and we can bring some more twigs and branches there a lot of this is going to be obscured so don't worry you need to put a few of these in though just to give an indication that there is something there because we're going to be putting a lot of foliage in this in a second just to make it stand out so a lot of this you won't see so there's no point working too hard on it I believe so a lot of this if you're going to hide it then what's the point in making it look you know perfect because it's not going to be perfect because we're going to be hiding most of it so yeah just indications here and there like that and we can sort that out in a second what I want to do now is I've washed that brush I'm going to pick up a little short flat and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white just a little bit of blue a bit of white a little bit of blue and I'm just going to lighten down this bright spot down here like this I'm going to bring a bit of this blue down like that bring a little bit of this light sail on blue bring it on an arc like this like as if there's a bank there underneath this bridge a little bit of Prussian blue now shadowing a little bit of Prussian blue just on the same brush just to bring a little bit of shadow in there like that just to indicate that maybe possibly going underneath our bridge there we go a little bit darker as we progress down here a little bit dark blending that in just merging it together we need to bring a little bit of shadow now just underneath this bridge like that and then go back into the sail on blue bring a little bit of that blue in mixing these blues together it's gonna be quite a cold painting so what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to warm this this bridge up in a second just bring that down there like that so get a little bit of that Prussian blue back on the brush and look at this edge here this is the underneath of the bridge that we need to try and darken up but not too much like that it's going to be darker there and it's going to be a little bit darker there but it's going to be catching a little bit of light underneath and that's going to be coming down like that and then bringing this down like that there you go just put a bit of shadow this side down like this because what we could be doing we could have a little stream in there couldn't we so if we just pull a little bit across like that pull that dark in and we could have a little bit of dark then here like that we can get a little bit of dark darkening up in places I'm using a small amount of paint at a time a little bit of moisture just to allow that paint to flow and as that is wet now what I'm going to do is wash my brush very very quickly get a little bit of my kitchen roll wipe the excess off picking up some white picking up some white and now I'm just going to bring in with a little filbert brush bring in just a a hint of white just to empty may, may, pretty maybe maybe a stream as I said so just bringing that in bringing it wide out there like that Put a bit of shadow in there in a second but that's our stream a little bit of blue maybe a little bit of blue just to emphasize some shadows and things 
in that water like that bring it up there you go back into there and then just blurring all that off like that there you go so far so good clean your brush okay so I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna um, have a little think now and what I'm gonna do is gonna miss the back of that off a touch I think and we I can do that you know in with some um, zinc mixing white which is um, uh, this one if you could that's a systems three um, but you I've actually got uh, it in uh, Windsor and Newton as well Galleria range which is the mixing white um, I'm just using this one because I've had it for years and I just want to use it up basically um, I'm gonna dry that off very quickly with a hairdryer. I'm just going to mist off that one section and then we can um, start putting some foliage in I think. It's looking nice. I like it. Yeah, it's a bit cold but we'll get it warmed up I'm sure. Right, what I want to do now, I'm just looking at this. I think uh, I was going to put some zinc mixing white on there but I decided I'm not going to do that because <laughs> it's dry a little bit now. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to get some thin down white and blue like that I think. I'm just going to go very lightly over that. If you want to know how I use zinc mixing white, there's loads of videos actually on the channel that go into that. Um, it's just the same principle what I'm doing here now. It's just uh, zinc mixing white is a little bit less opaque. Titanium white can be very opaque. Um, and that's why I used it in this instance because I thought, well, we'll just put some shadows in there because... Um, I wanted to knock it back a little bit more. There you go. I'll do it for me. Let's put a little bit of colour. Let's get some of this um, Prussian blue very lightly, scagging that over there like that. And let's get some detail into this bridge now. Okay, so. Um, uh, let me think. I got a little filbert brush here. This is the little filbert. This is number six. So I'm going to get some Prussian blue and add some black. There you go. You can make a Prussian blue with using um, ultramarine blue and um, black, which will give you a dark Prussian blue. So if you haven't got any Prussian blue, try mixing some ultramarine blue and some um, black, uh, normally a Mars black. We'll give you that now I've added a bit of white as you can see and it's turned gray which is the gray which is what I was looking for but there's a gray on the blue side so it's a blue gray and let's just get some let's just get some color into this bridge like that just that's going to be obscured with branches and trees and things so we don't need to worry too much about that don't have to paint everything remember that so let's bring a little bit of Colour over. Getting this bridge. Let's get nice and sharp like that. It's using the edge of the brush and just dragging that along. There's not a lot of moisture on my paint, so I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture into the paint just to get it to flow. There we are. Now the end of the bridge is there, so we need that to show like that because that's going to be sweeping down into a path in a minute concentrating a little bit now again it's impression blue because I want to put a little bit darker there that's going to be the end of the bridge and I'm going to bring in the steps now across like that just dragging it across don't worry if you don't paint all the canvas I see people doing this trying to paint every single bit of the canvas but there's no need for you to do that because I like a little bit of imperfection in my work and I like people to see that and it looks as if you, 
you know, you've you've actually done it and you haven't copied it or you haven't printed it on there because you can print on canvas, believe it or not. You quite you can. So there's that's the final step there. What we can do now, we can get this grey. Let's add a little bit more white to it. And then we can put that grey as a little bit of highlight onto these steps then. Like that. Again, exactly the same as you did with the bottom part. Now it looks as if this is the top part of the step because it's lighter and the bottom part is the dark part. I'm going to add a little bit more highlight on that as we progress to a small canvas. You can paint on any size canvas, you don't have to paint on on this, ca this size canvas if you don't want. You can paint on a whatever size canvas you want. I work on small canvases a lot of the time now because I find it a little bit easier for videoing as well. But just edging that off now, like that. Nice, I like that, I do. I'm gonna just pick up a detail brush, the same detail brush that we used earlier. Just a little bit of white, a little bit of blue. Just a, I don't want it too bright. I want to put some highlights on these steps now. Let's put some light catching on those steps like that. There you go. And a little bit up there. Not a lot. A little bit there. There we go. There we go. Let's put a little bit there and a little bit there like that. Let's get some more white into this grey, a little bit of medium mix. Um, I'm going to use my cork on the end of a stick. That's what it is, a cork on the end of a stick. Save yourself some money. Don't go and buy in all this stuff. You don't need to. I'm just going to put some light marks there. Just to represent maybe Went down a bit too far. <laughs> Talking too much, Clive. Yes, do talk a lot. There you go. That's just going to represent bricks and things. And you can put a couple of squiggly marks in like that just to represent that. Okay, what I want to do now is get some of this. Um, Prussian blue and black, and let's put um, let's see if we can't get. How am I going to do this? I need to. I need to. I need this to flow because so I, I want to try and do this in one movement. Big, big, big breath. Then I, t I held my breath. Then and just some lines down like that. As the handrail of the bridge. There we go. And then put a little bit of a circle on the top just like as if it's a little bit of Nobly decoration on the top of that bridge. There we are. That's a handrail. It's to stop you falling over into the little river. Let's go in below it. There we go. I like that. Now, um, again, I'm picking up that little filbert brush. I'm getting a bit of this white, and I'm just going to lighten up a couple of 
areas like this. Just a little bit of white, just a little bit of white, just to bring in a little bit of reflection, just here and there and there and here and there and everywhere. There we go. Now what we want to do is get one of my um, brushes. And these are available on the website. Um, you can pop along and get these. And this is what I use for my foliage brushes. And I'm just going to use this straight dry. A little bit of black. I'm going to put a little bit of red in there. Just to make a nice dark violet colour. Just to bring a bit of warmth in, basically. Um, just to bring a bit of warmth in. Put that other brush up there. Now, I'm starting up in this corner. I'm going to put a nice big lump of dark in there and that's going to come down like this and spray this brush I mean spray it is push it down let it all separate these brushes are designed to be separated because it'll give you the effect that you want and you've seen me using these brushes on other paintings again just putting some Don't kill all that. You don't want to kill it all. You want to you want to keep some of those trees there, but this is going to be dark again in there. There's a little bit of it showing through. You're hiding a lot, but this is good. A little tiny little bit of moisture. Be careful. You don't put too much moisture on this brush. It's a natural hairbrush, and um, they will splay and they will shed. So that's important, you've got to remember that, they will they will shed. So I'm going to bring some leaves out there like this. And you've heard me say, in order to show light, we have to put in dark. Some bushes there, some bushes in front of that. That's going to come down there like that. And we just spread that in there. Like that. Even a little bit of light shows through, and this area can all be black now, or that dark colour. There we go. Just push that in place like that. Now we're starting to get a, that um, vignette look. We're starting to surround our painting now. So we need to bring down some more leaves and things. This is another tree here, and some areas you want to go lighter, some areas you just want to go a bit darker, just to give that effect that there's leaves and a, a, and a bow as a part of a tree which is just being brought down under pressure basically. And we want to put some dark ones there as well, get some that in there like this. We've got a bit of greenery going on in there. That's going to set off that river a little bit. We've got maybe a little bush or something then just growing there. So we just put the dark in. That's all I'm doing is putting the dark in for now. There we go. Good. That looks nice. Now I want to get some crimson on my brush. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm going to put in some red let's just light that up a touch with some yellow so a little bit of crimson a little bit of yellow and i'm not I'm, I'm not cleaning my brush so we've got a mixture of all those colors in there it'll turn the mud no it won't not as, not as long as you're careful as long as you're aware of what you're doing and if it starts going a bit brown then you've got to start thinking of washing your brush but these brushes work well when they're not wet so if you do wash these brushes make sure you dry them that way you'll get the best out of the brushes which, which is what i want you to do i want to be careful where i'm putting this this lovely ready orangey color 
There we go. Let's put some curl it down there like that. Don't go all over the. What I'm trying, I'm trying to leave little pockets of black as well, or that dark color. I'm trying to leave pockets there. I'm just adding color in now, which is going to give that depth. It's going to make it look as if there, it, there is something there, a foliage. So it's all it's a mixture of all different colors. So we've got the you've got the under color. Now we've got the the secondary color, which I'm putting on now. There's going to be a little bit of that ready color there, and there's a little bit of red coming in there like that. That red and orange is a lovely color. There we go. We're a bit more yellow this side. Bringing that in. Tap tapy tap tap tap. Don't be. Don't overwork that. Tap it. Push it up a little bit that way. Tap it this way. Tap it that way. Tap it that way. So it's a little bit lighter this side. There you go. Just adding that colour in. Adding a bit more yellow to it now. I'm going to have to clean this brush in a second. Right, bringing in a bit more of that colour. This is going to warm that blueness up. Let's bring a bit of this colour now over here. Add a bit of colour over this side. Just on certain sections. There we go. And then we might add a bit more. A bit more yellow. I'm just going to get my brush. I'm going to pull all the paint off my brush like that. I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to dry my brush like this. And then I'm going to fluff it up like that. Now, it's still dark, but it's going to help a lot more now because it's not overloaded. You don't want an overloaded brush. One of the tricks of this method that I teach is that you don't want an overloaded brush. So we need to bring some I like the colour in, so we're working up in sections of tones, so we bring it we come in lighter and lighter and lighter, basically. Lighter and lighter and lighter. bushes and things there. Lighter and lighter and lighter. Bit of yellow straight into some yellow. Got a lovely lovely colour coming in now. I'm going straight into some yellow. bit of that resin and crimson in there. What a nice warm spot there. What I'm going to do now is pick up this um, where's my little filbert brush. There we go. And I can pick up some of this resin and crimson. I don't know where that white came from. Pick up some of this resin and crimson. I'm just going to put some red there like that catches the eye I think that catches the eye so you can see the steps coming down through that's what we want that's what we want how's that looking it's looking pretty good so we've got that warmth in the front going back to that cold cold look in the, in the background we can get some pure yellow on our brush now and just put in some leaves maybe in a little bit 
bigger in the front there like that maybe you can just do that there you go that'd be nice I like that I do like that let's catch the eye let's go back into our strip lining brush now and back into this dark colour and let's put some branches in these trees now just mix up a bit of Prussian blue and a bit of black and just put some leaves in like that like as if it's a few branches and you can put in a few things like this I'm trying to do a similar type of painting so you, it gives you time to practice these things and it's all about it's all about practice that's all it is practice practice makes perfect as they say there you go and there's a nice simple easy painting for you to have a try at and uh, see incorporated a few different techniques um, and spend a little bit more time than I have done today on that and then you will have a wonderful work of art so thank you very much for watching me please like a comment share and subscribe and uh, paint away the stress of everyday life with me here in Wales I'm Clyde from Clive's Art I'll see you next time bye